I'm Kyle Kerwin. I'm the CEO of Big Eye. Before Big Eye, uh, I worked on the data platform team at Uber for uh, several years. So uh, I was a product manager there. I was a data scientist uh, before that. Uh, and I led a team there of about 15, and we built a bunch of internal tools for uh, doing data quality testing, for uh, doing incident management for data pipelines. Uh, we developed a data catalog internally, a data lineage system. Um, and these were super, super useful uh, in the context of incident management for preventing problems from reaching our actual business. So we were doing things like ETA predictions, dynamic pricing. If you ever submit a support ticket in the Uber app, that's actually hitting a model first to decide whether or not that support ticket needs to go to a human for a response. Um, or it may actually go and skip over one level of human and go directly to somebody who has the ability to issue refunds without asking for permission and stuff like that. So a ton of the edge of Uber's business between their company and you is driven by uh, sort of online things that depend on data pipelines. And so being able to identify when we had a problem in a pipeline and importantly do something about it in a, an organized fashion was super important there. Um, and that led to me eventually leaving and, and starting to work on Big Eye. This talk is not about Big Eye though. This talk is about instant management. Um, so what is incident management? Um, so the ITIL, uh, which is a service that, uh, or it's a group or a foundation that defines a lot of stuff around IT services, defines it as uh, an unplanned interruption to a service or a reduction in quality of a service. Um, and if that sounds a little bit dry, um, I brought a picture. Um, so uh, that's you on the right uh, if you're a data engineer, and this is your users on the left. Um, and this would be what an incident looks like. Um, and so this is what they looked like at Uber, right? So we would have a problem in a data pipeline somewhere. It would cascade down that pipeline. It'd get into a query. It'd go into a dashboard. And then some executive is looking at that dashboard. And they're like, why is there no data in here for three days? Or this number is obviously incorrect. Like sales did not triple last week for the entire planet, um, I'm pretty sure. Um, and so then they would get upset. And then that would go to the head of data. And then that would go to somebody else. And then eventually that would go to me or somebody on my team or another data engineer. And then they have a very bad day. Um, so the good news is uh, incident management as a concept for dealing with these types of problems in an organized fashion has actually been around for quite a while, uh, just not in uh, most data teams. Um, so incident management uh, is largely practiced in software engineering, DevOps, infrastructure. Um, and there's a number of very, very large companies out there that, among other things, make incident management systems. Um, so Atlassian, if anybody's used Jira before, um, I too love Jira. Um, and Atlassian makes uh, incident management stuff. Um, Fire Hydrant, to the right of that, is a younger company, um, but they focus on incident management. Of course, everybody knows Datadog and PagerDuty as well, I'm sure. Um, and so this is a very well fleshed out process traditionally in DevOps and software engineering. Um, so this talk is about explaining just these core concepts and fundamentals that have been used for over a decade to help software and DevOps teams deal with these problems in an efficient manner and get them fixed before they cause major impact to businesses. Um, so I'm going to walk you through that. So this is the basic flow of an incident management process. So from top to bottom, the first step is identification. So this is figuring out that something is broken in the first place. So ideally, this is done with monitoring and alerting systems. On a lot of data teams, it's done by uh, people looking at the dashboards that are busted. Um, so that's a problem in and of itself. Um, but that is where the incident begins, is in realizing something's wrong. The second step is in mobilizing a team of people that are going to go and do something about it. So this is sending out pages. This is uh, pulling together people in Slack, et cetera. Uh, we'll talk about what that team looks like in a bit. The next step is diagnosis. So that team comes together. They look at what is the actual impact from the problem. How many of our customers does this affect, if any? Uh, they escalate the problem and say, well, this is not really a big deal. Like, we'll fix it, but it doesn't need to happen right now. Or let's start pulling people in. This is costing $10,000 every 15 minutes that we don't solve the problem. We need to move, like, right now. So that happens at the diagnosis phase. Then there's the resolution phase where we actually do something to fix the issue. This could be working in, you know, doing an airflow backflow or a backfill or something like that. And then closure happens quite a bit afterwards. Um, but this is wrapping up what happened and, and looking for things that we can do better next time. So stepping through that identification phase. So on the left, I mentioned uh, Datadog is one of these like tools that's been around for a decade on the software and infrastructure side. So uh, in an ideal case, your tools are doing the identification of a problem for you. This could happen at 3 in the morning. So for example, here uh, we have a spike in API endpoint latency. This could happen at 3 AM. Your software engineering team might be asleep. Your DevOps team might be asleep. So this needs to be picked up by a machine. You can't sit around and wait for a human being to say, 
oh, you know, if you work at Google and you're an SRE at Google, you can't just have people at Google go load the home page and see if the home page is loading slowly. You need you know, automated alerting to tell you about this. On the right is an example in a data context. Um, so this is a screenshot from our product um, identifying a drop in the number of rows inserted into a table in Snowflake. Either way, you should be alerting uh, on these types of things in an automated fashion so that uh, machines can pick up problems before humans do. Next up, mobilization. So I mentioned pulling a team together. Uh, so there's a few key roles in a standard incident management process. They can vary a little bit from company to company, but a very common template is an incident commander. Uh, this is the person who's making decisions about what the team's going to do next, who do we need to pull in, et cetera. Um, so they're helping guide the process of solving the problem. You have somebody that's called a scribe. Uh, I think this is a funny name, but it's apt. So this person's pure job is to document everything that's happening. They don't need to make decisions. They don't need to communicate externally with anybody. They don't need to do any debugging. They're documenting absolutely everything that's happening during the incident, so there's a clear record of what happened afterwards. A liaison focuses on external communication. Often, the manager of the team is not the incident commander. Often, the liaison is the manager of a team, and they're the one who is communicating upward to the rest of the organization. They're telling leadership what's going on. They might be communicating externally with customers, and they'll be providing updates on a regular basis, saying, we've identified the, the source of the problem. We're taking steps to, to resolve it. We haven't resolved it yet. Four hours later, OK, the problem's resolved. This is what we're doing to clean it up. Very often, that's the, uh, the team leader, the manager. Uh, and then you've got your subject matter experts. So these in a data team might be analytics engineers, data engineers, data scientists. And these are the people who actually have an intimate knowledge of the pipeline, the data set, the various tools that are used. Um, and they can actually go in and perform fixes and solutions and, and get hands on keyboard. Importantly, you'll notice that uh, each person has a role, and those roles don't overlap. And this is a really key part of being prepared for incident management, is that when that team comes together, even if it's 3 in the morning and everybody's groggy because they just woke up, everybody knows what they're supposed to do, and there's no uh, confusion. And so balls don't get dropped because people aren't forgetting to scribe and take notes because somebody's explicit job is to be the scribe. OK, next step, diagnosis. Um, so an, an important thing that happens in this stage is our team needs to understand what is the impact of the problem that's happening. Um, and a very common uh, escalation pattern that's used for this is called SEVs. So starting from the bottom, a SEV5 problem is something that goes in your backlog, uh, or it's something that you fix next week. It's a very minor issue. It definitely does not hurt your users or your business in any way. It doesn't take down any internal services. As we work our way to the top, we have a larger amount of degradation of our internal services, and we have a larger impact to our customer base. So at Uber, anything that would prevent you from actually taking a trip or anything that dramatically spiked or dropped a dynamic price that caused you not to, not to request a trip, uh, that would have been a SEV5 outage, because at their scale, that can easily cost millions of dollars um, over the span of like an hour, um, given the size of business that they're operating. This would also be true at, at a Meta or a Google or anybody else as well. Um, so what you, the team's going to do during this diagnosis phase is escalate the issue up as high as it needs to go and no further, and then they'll, they'll be able to pull in resources from other teams if needed, take extra actions as needed, um, or if they discover it's actually a lower level problem, then everybody can go back to sleep, we'll put it in the, in the ticketing system and we'll deal with it tomorrow. OK, resolution. So we've got our team. They're taking actions. Um, during the diagnosis step, we also identified why is the problem occurring. We used our observability. We used our monitoring systems. We dug into the issue. Now it's time to actually go and get hands on keyboard and implement the fixes. So as I mentioned, in a data context, this might mean rolling back a change to a DBT model and then rerunning the job to backfill a table. It might be you know, restarting an airflow task. Um, but whatever those steps are that you identified in the diagnosis phase, now you're actually doing them. Uh, and you may be sitting around waiting for those steps to complete. Right? It may take a while for that backfill to run, uh, depending on the size of your data set. But all of that work is captured in this resolution phase. This also includes capping it off by confirming that the fixes have worked. Uh, so it's really important that you reevaluate whatever your pipeline or your services from the perspective of your users and make sure that, OK, now the data all does look correct. They're ready to use it again. Um, and we're, we're sort of done with that phase. Last phase, closure. 
So this happens uh, afterwards, uh, and this is just the team wrapping up and identifying what steps could we have taken to prevent the problem, what could we do better next time. That gets documented. Importantly, this is a, called a blameless process, so we're not looking for whose fault is it that the problem occurred. That's a no-no topic. The only focus is on why did it happen, what systems broke, what could we uh, do better next time. <laughs> Uh, if you want to learn more about this topic, uh, those four tools that I recommended have a ton of great materials on their blogs. Um, they have playbooks, they have guides. Um, a lot of the material here you can find in various ebooks and things like that and start to put into practice on your own team. Uh, I didn't link to them here. They're pretty easy to find uh, on their websites. Um, but if you do want links, um, please uh, send me a note and I'd be happy to uh, send you some of them later. Thanks for learning about incident management. Whoa.